So if a family were coming to me for genetic counseling for malignant hyperthermia, I would take a family history and determine who is affected with malignant hyperthermia, draw out their family tree to determine who potentially is at risk, explain the genetics of the condition, how is it inherited, and the different tests that are available to them to determine do they have malignant hyperthermia. Uh, also, in that process, we might be, they have questions about how much does that cost, where do I go to get the testing, will my insurance pay for the testing, so we try to work through some of that. And then making arrangements for the testing to be done, and then interpreting and explaining the results when they come back. So if I have a patient who's had malignant hyperthermia episode, um, this is an autosomal dominant genetic condition, which means that when you are affected, you have a 50% chance of passing that gene on to your child. So there's a 50% chance that the child would develop or be susceptible or have an episode. Um, if you haven't inherited that gene, then you're not at risk for passing it on. There are two ways to help determine if somebody is susceptible to malignant hyperthermia. One way is through a muscle biopsy where they do contracture testing. And that's going to give us a definite answer as to whether somebody is susceptible to malignant hyperthermia. There are about five centers in the United States that offer this contracture testing. You have to be a certain weight in, a, you know, in order to have the testing, so it's not available to very young children. The other method of testing is a genetic test. It looks at a particular gene called the RYR1 gene. And we find that about 50% of people who are MH susceptible will have a change in that gene. And if you can identify the change in the gene in the affected family member, then you can test other people who are at risk in the family to see if they've inherited that same change in the gene and are at risk. So the advantages of the genetic testing are that it's much less invasive than the muscle biopsy. We just need a small sample of blood to do the testing. It can be performed anywhere and that sample can be shipped to a laboratory to do the genetic testing. The cost of the genetic testing ranges from $500 to several thousand dollars. Um, but a muscle biopsy can be even more expensive than that. Um, insurance may or may not pay for genetic testing, so we can help families determine that as well before they have the testing, determine what they might be responsible, fi responsible for financially. People we would recommend doing genetic testing for would be somebody who has had an MH episode, somebody who's had a positive contracture test, somebody who has a family member with malignant hyperthermia. If you have a change in the gene that's been seen before and we know that it causes malignant hyperthermia, then it's very accurate. You can then test your children and you know it's going to tell us for sure did they get that change in the gene and are they susceptible. The problem with the genetic testing is that not everybody who has MH has a detectable change in the gene. For those family members, may, I mean, for that person, there may be other genes that are involved that we haven't discovered yet, other things that, you know, we just don't know about. So if you have an affected patient who has MH and they have a genetic test and it's negative, then you can't offer genetic testing for the rest of the family. It's not going to be informative. And they have to depend on the muscle biopsy in order to do the contracture testing to tell them if they're susceptible. If you came to me and said, my uncle had malignant hyperthermia, my uncle's deceased or he's not available, I could test you. You might have a detectable change in the gene that would be informative and tell us, yes, you are susceptible. But if you're negative, it doesn't, t it doesn't help us. It doesn't give us any additional information without the information on your uncle. So it's a little bit of a, you're, you're, you're banging around in the dark a little bit if you don't have that first 
that first piece of information. Yeah, I mean, we do the best we can to try to calculate risks based on the results. But the more people we can test in the family, the better. Um, and that's why it's important to speak with somebody about your results. Um, because if you get a negative genetic test, some people might think, oh, my genetic test is negative, I'm not at risk. But it really depends on looking at the family, seeing who else was tested, and determining what your risks are then. So um, if somebody wants to have genetic testing for malignant hyperthermia, um, it would be great if they could meet with a genetic counselor to go through this process of explaining what the test involves and what kind of information they're going to get. Not everybody can do that, so a lot of what I do is on the phone, talking to patients and explaining the testing, um, sending them laboratory requisitions, shipping instructions. I might also be doing this through the physician. A physician may call me or a laboratory might call me. Um, they can have their blood drawn wherever they live and shipped to the laboratory to have the testing performed. Testing takes probably four to eight weeks for results, and then those results go back to their physician, and we can also discuss the results, either in person or on the phone. So tell me who